Welcome to another exciting teaching from 26 West Church Kids. We hope you enjoy learning more about our great God and grow and enjoying Him in your everyday lives. Be sure to check out the Parent Weekly at 26westchurch.org slash parents for more information from our teaching today. Here we go. So, hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Jamie. Today oh, I brought man. a new friend with me. This is Meredith. Howdy, and we are partner. so glad to have her helping out today. Um, we have a verse, um, I introduced it last week, but I want to share again. This is from Philippians, it's verse 6 from chapter 1. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. God's working in you and he's going to keep working in your life. So I love knowing that. When I mess up, God's still working. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, Grab your Bibles and get ready. We're going to be in Genesis today. Before we start, though, let's go ahead and close our eyes and pray. Let's invite God to be here with us, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the beautiful fall leaves and the way that you show that you're in charge. Um, we love you so much. Thank you for loving us. And please help us just to learn what you have for us today. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Go in your mind, I want you to imagine, and maybe for some of you this won't be that hard because of the world we live in these days. Mm. Imagine you're walking into the grocery store to buy food for your family. Okay. You get in there, and as you look around, you see nothing but empty shelves. No food at all. Okay? Wow. How would you feel? I'd feel sad, and I'd feel worried. Yeah. I think, same here, like, well, where will we get our food? What right. do we do now? So, in the Big God story, something similar actually did happen. We were talking about it a little bit last week, and we're going to go into more detail this time. So, there was a famine, or a time where there wasn't much food around, and it was about to happen. We had heard about it. It's supposed to last for seven years. Wow. Not just a few months, but like years and years. So, the good news is God had a plan to save His people. As we know, God always does have a plan. So, God helped Joseph interpret one of Pharaoh's dreams. Remember Joseph, the guy who went through all these hardships? So, he's here to the point where he's about to interpret one of Pharaoh's dreams, telling Pharaoh about the dangerous time that's about to come. In return for interpreting his dream, Pharaoh brought Joseph out of the prison that he had been locked up in, and he put him in charge of storing up all of the food to prepare for the upcoming famine. So when the famine arrived, all these people from the small towns that were outside of Egypt came to Egypt to get the food that had been saved up for them. So at this point, you guys at home, you can do this if you want, and Meredith is going to help me out. Um, you can make these expressions and hold them while I tell you this story. So the first thing you're going to do is act really exhausted. She's going to do it, yeah, she's going to do it at different times. You can do it when you want. So... Here we go. Joseph's father and brothers lived in Canaan, one of the small, smaller areas outside of Egypt. And Joseph's father knows about this famine that's happening, and he says to them, this is in Genesis 42, 1 through 2, he says, I've heard that there's grain in Egypt. I want you to go down there, buy enough grain to keep us alive, otherwise we'll die. Real hard times happening. Yeah. This is a true story, you guys. So... All of the brothers, there were 12 minus Joseph, so 11, and then except Benjamin, so mm -hmm. 10 of the brothers, they go to Egypt to get some food. They traveled 200 miles. Oh, I'd be exhausted. Yes, <laughs> it would be exhausting. Would. It'd be like driving from Northern Oregon, where we are, all the way down to oh. nearly California. And in a car, that would take like four or five hours to get all the way down there, um, unless you speed. Don't speed. <laughs> but they didn't have cars. They didn't have planes or trains or anything like that. They either walked or they rode on an animal. Were, what, were they wearing sandals? Like little sandals? I mean, I don't know. Like made out Bible of like shoes. Woody, Bible shoes, I guess. I don't know. Wow. So they walked all the way there. And it's not like it took one day. It probably took them weeks to get there. So now you can unfreeze if yeah. you happen to be frozen. So once the brothers got to Egypt, they bowed before the ruler who is handing out grain. I wonder if this like popped up a memory in your mind. Mm -hmm. So you can bow down if you want to act this out. 
Do you guys know who was distributing the grain? Who do you think it was? Joseph. It was Joseph. So remember how Joseph had that dream where there were like the stalks of grain that were all there and they all bowed down to this one other stalk of grain? So this is the day that the dream came true. But the brothers didn't recognize Joseph. They had no idea who he was, but he did recognize his brothers. You guys, this has been like, I think Joseph was sold into slavery when he was 17 and he was maybe almost 40 by the time his brothers came to Egypt. Wow. So it's been a long time. He's grown up and changed a lot. So they didn't recognize him. So <clears throat> can you remember what his brothers did to him earlier? Yes. They took his coat. Yeah. And they that threw coat that his dad gave him. A beautiful coat. Yeah. And then they threw him in a ditch. Yeah. And then they sold him into slavery. Yeah. All those things. Not so, good brothers. <laughs> not good. <laughs> I would agree. Not not a, not a good situation. So he was his father's favorite son. He was beloved. And then all of a sudden he's sold into slavery and is having to serve other people. But as we know, as we've seen all through time, God had a plan. And he also had a plan to save Joseph. So we come to the part where Joseph is devastated. He's sad. You guys can make your sad face. He's been sold into slavery. Um, so he's there. He's sad. He finally sees his brothers. So Joseph is like, okay, there's some things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. First, he accused his brothers of being spies and threw them into jail. He knew they weren't spies, but he did this anyway. Then Joseph told the brothers to go home with some food, but then returned to Egypt because he knew Benjamin hadn't come yet. So he said, come back with my brother Benjamin. So the brothers returned home. They told their father Jacob what had happened. Mm -hmm. And you can unfreeze if you happen to be frozen crying. Jacob finally agreed to send them back to Egypt with Benjamin. When they arrived, Joseph saw Benjamin and he became so emotional because it had been, what, like almost 20 years Long since he'd time. seen his brother. He ran out of the room and he cried. Mm -hmm. Later, Joseph returned. He prepared this amazing feast for his brothers, like, like spaghetti. Are, yeah. Do you think it, no. Spaghetti and meatballs. Or maybe like. Both. Uh, yeah. Linguini. Is How would you eat that? Like twirl. And then little meatball. She has good manners. I would be like, <laughs> or oh, something. That's... Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, know. I don't know. How would you guys do it? You can try. Anyway, so they have this big feast. He gave them grain again to take home because remember, it is a famine going on. So he gives them grain to go home. And all this time, his brother still hadn't figured out that this was Joseph. Like, they still didn't know. So yeah. they just thought that this good thing was happening. But then there's a hitch. Mm -hmm. Joseph secretly put a silver cup from like the possessions that they had there into Benjamin's bag. Okay. And then he told the servants to chase the brothers and accuse them of stealing the cup. So he set them up. Joseph. So the brothers protested saying that he hadn't stolen anything. But the servants said to the brothers, they said, and this is Genesis 44:10, but only the one who stole the cup will be my slave. Mm -hmm. The rest of you may go free. Now, who had the cup in their backpack? Benjamin. 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 And he was like the last son of Rachel. And just there's this history. So the brothers, thinking that they were innocent, they agreed to be searched. But of course, the cup was found in Benjamin's bag. <gasps> So the brothers knew their father was going to be completely heartbroken that Benjamin would have to become the slave and that he wouldn't be returning home. Mm -hmm. So finally, all of these things have happened, and Joseph has known all along these are his brothers. Mm -hmm. Finally, finally, he doesn't hide his secret anymore. He tells his brothers in Genesis 45, this is verse 4, he says, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. What do you think the brothers did? Yeah. That, what? So they like pulled a home alone. They were shocked. <laughs> they were shocked. And they were terrified because they had done some pretty bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And this guy, their brother, has all this power. So the good news, though, Joseph said, don't be angry. Don't be sad about what you did to me. Um, he said that instead, God, this is uh, verse 5, God sent him, Joseph, ahead of them so he could save their lives and care for them. 
if Joseph didn't have that place of power, he wouldn't have been able to predict the, the dream. He wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to explain what it meant. He wouldn't have been able to store up the grain. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been able to give it to his brothers. But because God had a plan, he was able to do all of those things. So Joseph forgave his brothers because he knew that God had chosen him for this moment to play this big role in history. So everybody's happy. Yay! Yes! Like Joseph has forgiven the brothers. So <clears throat> Joseph said, bring Jacob back, bring the father back to Egypt. I bet he missed his dad. Mm -hmm. So they could all live as a family again. So great job. Thank you. Thank you guys for all of your help with the expressions. So imagine, Joseph knew that God had saved him and his brothers. He knew all along. Joseph knew that God had let him go through all of the things that he did, rejection, slavery, mm -hmm. jail even, all of these things, so that God could use him. He didn't spare him. God didn't spare Joseph. But he did use Joseph um, to work out a plan. He made a plan to save Joseph's family. And through them, God saved many other lives. So, do you remember how um, Joseph's father, Jacob, um, he got a new name that God gave to him? Yes, do you remember what it was? Israel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he has this new name, Israel. Israel was the grandson of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And God promised to give Abraham more descendants than there are stars in the sky, right? So he's going to give all these descendants to Abraham. This is what's amazing. One of those descendants was Jesus. Jesus is one of those descendants. So God was in control the whole time. He knew he would preserve Joseph's family even in the middle of a seven-year-long famine because Jesus was going to be one of those descendants. God didn't spare Joseph from all those hard times, but through it all, he was working out his plan that he had in mind all along to save Joseph and his family. God's plans are bigger than our plans. Mm -hmm. uh, I was telling her earlier, I one time made this beautiful cake. I thought it was going to be amazing. I was going to have it at my daughter's birthday party. Mm. I made it. It looked neat. And then it was like cake shaped. And then it was like warm in the room. And the cake split in half oh and fell God. apart. I'm sorry. I know. It was kind of, it was pretty sad. We had <laughs> cupcakes instead. I still ate it with a fork later. But my point <laughs> is, I had a plan. It didn't go how I wanted it to. My plans are not perfect. But the good news, God has plans and his plans are perfect. Mm -hmm. And they do go how he wants them to. He's able to preserve Joseph's family and do all of these good things. So here's a cool verse I want you to hear. Um, in Genesis 50, 20, it says, Joseph told his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And since they were saved, Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So when we trust and obey Jesus, we are part of God's plan. He wants to be part of your life and let you into his family and be part of the big God story with him. So um, I, I want you to know sometimes in the middle of these hard times though, it's kind of hard to see where everything's gonna go and it's hard to feel okay. But you need to know that God is working these things for a good thing, for a good purpose. And you can trust him to do that. And sometimes we have to be reminded of that truth because we don't know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So. Meredith's going to read this blessing over you. I want you to listen to the words and really think about what it means for you. Let God talk to you through these words. Um, <clears throat> there's two parts in here that I want to kind of tell you about ahead of time. One is the word fortress. Imagine like one of those giant old castles with a wall that's super high and it's put there to keep danger out. Mm -hmm. God's a fortress. The other one is a refuge, and I have this image in my mind of hiking. Like for some reason, I'm on a snowy path, and the storm that I didn't expect came through, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to my destination in time. And I suddenly see like a cabin in the woods or whatever. It's got smoke coming from the chimney, and there's a warm light in the window, and I get to go inside in the middle of this massive storm and find comfort and safety. 
So the words are fortress and refuge. So as you hear those words, imagine the way that God can be that for you, okay? So here you go. Thanks, Jamie. I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in Him at all times. Pour out your heart to Him, for God is our refuge. So powerful mm -hmm. what God is for us. So I want you guys to remember a few things. One, God loves you. He loves you more than you've ever been loved by anybody else. God loves you. He saved you. He's saving you and you are saved. He also protects you and he will always be with you no matter what. So rest in that truth. God does save. He saved Joseph and his family. He's also active now saving us so we can trust him. Um, this week, I want you guys to look in your Parent Weekly. I want you to look at those discussion questions to kind of just talk about what you listen to today and also see the activity that goes along with this. And remember that we love you, we're praying for you, and we hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.